Let's start with goodcitylife.org. What is the project and what are its goals? Yeah. So the idea and the rhetoric behind Smart City is uh, one of uh, efficiency and security. Um, usually they say a smart city is a city in which um, if you go to work, you're always going to be on time. If you go shopping, there is no queue and you know what, you're going to feel really, really safe uh, because of the CCTV cameras around you. So it's about efficiency, security. But we all know that uh, we don't choose a city because of this efficiency and security. I mean, they, they make a city acceptable, but don't, they don't make a city great. So what makes city great are fuzzy concepts, concepts that are really difficult to quantify, like beauty, happiness, uh, these sort of things. That's why we want, um, we built goodcitylife.org, which is a global network of people, uh, researchers, um, people in industry, they ri really think that there is an alternative agenda to the smart city agenda. And that's what we want to do. We want to empower these people and we want to, uh, also do research in this uh, kind of new area of uh, simply giving a good life to people. And so there are several map projects inside yeah. of goodcitylife.org. Can you talk a little bit about those and what kind of engagement you're seeing with them? Right. So th there are different projects represented. Uh, one was the Happy Maps uh, project where um, we built a tool that instead of giving you the shortest path from A to B uh, by walk, is going to give you the short path that is more pleasant. So it makes you happier or is more beautiful, is quiet. Um, so that's, that was one project that was basically based on visual cues right so what people visually consider beautiful but then <laughs> when we did uh, experiments in London and Boston we found out that people also had other aspects uh, uh, um, when judging a city to be beautiful for example they, they were speaking about smell they were speaking about sound and that's where smelly maps and chatty maps uh, came, up, came about so smelly maps is basically an interactive map if you go on goodcitylife.org uh, under smelly maps, you can see an interactive map of uh, mm, more than 11 cities. Let's pick London or New York. You have the map of the city, and then you can click on each street segment, and you can see the smell profile of the street or the uh, sound profile of the street. And the idea uh, overall is like to map the entire smellscape, soundscape of the city by using basically social media, in particular picture tags. So the tags that people associate with pictures. And so on this, the smelly map, let's just talk about that yeah. one. So it's uh, like coffee or pizza yeah. or what, what are some of the, the more popular smells? What are dri what's driving people to different neighborhoods? Yeah, uh, so one problem we had is first of all to build the lexicon of, uh, of uh, urban smell, right? That's the, thing, the first thing you need to do. And uh, what we did, we partnered with Kate and she does the P her PhD at the Royal College of Art and her PhD is about uh, smell walking. So basically she goes around the world, she takes people, local people, and then she asks them to smell things and uh, and report what they smell, whether it's expected, pleasurable, familiar, but also the descriptor. So basically we had 280, more than 280 descriptors of smell. And then by looking at which descriptor co-occur in which pictures, um, the, the ones that were co-occur together, they basically form clusters, right? And then we have basically a lexicon of categories and subcategories. So to answer your question in terms of categories, the main one are, for example, the negative ones are traffic, or the positive ones are nature, food. Um, um, the bizarre one maybe to a certain extent is animals uh, because there is this, this big cluster of animal descriptor or smells and if you look on the map invariably in each city there is a big hotspot and that is the zoo, the zoo right? sure. so where you have the big hotspot of animal smells. That's fantastic. Yeah, and the idea behind smelling maps is basically to not only look at the negative side like uh, nitrogen oxide uh, these things are related with each other we, we check with uh, epi epidemiology whether we were in the right direction but also to celebrate the positive part of smell uh, nature smell for example could be uh, either energizing like mint um, or it could be totally relaxing like lavender so what do you put uh, next to a um, bench a public bench lavender what do you put on a running truck maybe mint, right? So you can now distinguish these positive smells and you can plan for them. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Let's shift gears to your current work, your day job, if you will. 
Um, you're building the Social Dynamics Group at Bell Labs. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of team you're building and what you're, you're hoping to accomplish? The team is very, uh, is very diverse in the sense that the mission is to answer uh, well, social science questions in a computational way. And, and, and the area is called computational social science. So the idea is that you can answer the question of why people vote in a certain way, why like-minded people congregate together, why befriend each other, um, why people move in a certain way in the city, why they experience the city in a certain way, right? Why, um, uh, why what are the hidden biases in our uh, thought process, in our decision making that can uh, be helpful for our health, for example. So this team is looking at all these questions that are basically very, that have been answered in a qualitative way in other disciplines other than computer science, but now we might have the data to answer them in a quantitative way. Oh, that's excellent. So when you're doing research in emerging areas of urban informatics, what are you keeping an eye on? What papers and studies do you read? And what are you finding most compelling in that space? Yeah, the funny thing is that uh, I actually read uh, things that they were published in the 70s, uh, just because uh, basically these guys like Stanley Milgram, Jane Jacobs, were very, uh, very, to a certain extent, qualitative people. So they were describing experiments uh, that were really small scale but now with the web we have the opportunity to actually do uh, large scale experiments for example one of my projects was urbanopticon.org and the idea behind that was to replicate Milgram experiment that he did with, with his students in 72 and I replicated it in 2012 with the web and the difference is that, first, you get, don't get only undergrads. Second, instead of uh, getting hundreds of undergrads, you get thousands of people playing the game. And the game is fun. It's not a 90-minute experiment. It's like a one-minute game with a purpose on the web. Right, so um, actually what I read is uh, the classical bit and trying to rephrase them in, in the new world of the internet and of the web. Um, in terms of uh, recent publication that I really admire um, was uh, the book by Charles Montgomery, Happy City. Uh, so it's an excellent book to actually get uh, basically all the literature in different fields about these um, cities that will increase uh, well-being and happiness. And are there any specific uh, emerging technologies that you're finding interesting in relation? In relation to cities? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. So, I, I mean, currently I'm thinking about something related to algorithmic regulation. Um, so we did, uh, we wrote a paper uh, that we presented uh, a few weeks ago in uh, the conference Dub, 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 Dub. And the idea was uh, that basically, these platforms like Airbnb or Uber generate uh, data. And this data could be used for uh, regulation. Basically, what we find out is that, for example, we look at the evolution of all Airbnb in London, and we look at, uh, and we, uh, at which areas were affected. And then for those areas, we had uh, census data. So the idea was that uh, now you can see how the evolution of Airbnb is related to different socioeconomic conditions. And, and then you can see that certain areas there might be some sub dodgy subletting going on um, and uh, you can regulate that because you can build an index out of the data. But the same thing in general you can do with any platform, right? That you generate data inside the city and then you take that data to build analytics that might be useful for uh, policy making, right? In, in theory, right? And then, uh, and then you can change your policies and then you can see the impact of those policies in the city and so on. So that's something that fascinates me, and um, I'm reading a lot about uh, fr from uh, low schools and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, schools in geography. They are starting to um, talk about this 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 uh, field, this area, but uh, it's it's really at the beginning. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And so, last question for you on a more personal level: What people and projects are you following? What are you finding personally interesting these days? Personally interesting, well, uh, uh, in addition to this algorithmic uh, regulation, um, I find a lot of things interesting. Um, so, uh, well, for example, one thing that I'm reading, uh, uh, started yesterday, um, is a book on touch. 
uh, just because we did a project on Epi Maps, it was the visual part of the city, then we had a smell, then we had a sound, and now there is the touch bit. And the touch bit is quite uh, difficult, right? Because you can think about certain applications for blind people, of course. Um, but if you think about daily applications uh, for uh, daily habits of uh, anyone, uh, then, uh, then it's, it's becoming more difficult. So I'm reading this book and trying to figure out um, uh, what's the relationship between touch and the other senses and the relationship between touch and our decision making. So at some point, maybe there will be something uh, interesting coming out. Well, excellent. Thank you very much for talking with me today. It was fun. Thank you.